Hey guys, welcome back to my studio. So today we're going to be talking about reference photos and what makes a good reference photo versus what makes a bad reference photo. Um, so today what I've decided to do is load up the old iPad. Um, I've uploaded my reference photo onto this instead of drawing it out onto, sorry, instead of printing it out onto a piece of paper. Now I normally work directly off a iPad image anyway just because it allows me to sort of zoom in and have a look at the details a little bit better. Um, plus my printer doesn't really work too well so it keeps running out of ink. Um, I know that probably doesn't mean that it doesn't work <laughs> too well, it just means I don't replace the ink often enough. Um, but I just find it a lot easier just to um, use my iPad for this. Um, and it also allows me to draw a little bit on the iPad, try out a few different things, um, darken a few areas, see what that's going to look like, boost the contrast, lower the contrast, things like that. Um, so I've got my microphone just in front of me here, so I hope you can all hear me. Um, now I've noticed that a couple of times in some of my other videos, like I say, I've sort of constantly hammered in that you need to pay attention to your reference photos. Um, and today, sort of, I'm just going to go through why. Now, the image that we're going to be talking about today is going to be this tiger image. Now, this is one that I'm currently working on. Um, so hopefully you'll sort of see when that video gets released um, what I was talking about in this one compared to when I actually did it in my drawing if that makes sense. Now when I'm choosing a reference photo that's where I'm going to start. Um, so I need to make sure that the reference photo is going to be something that first of all I'm going to want to draw. Now I knew I was looking for a tiger image um, because I wanted to draw quite a large um, tiger piece and I found I came across this reference photo on wildlife reference photos. Now I'll post a link down to that in the description for you guys. So if you want to have a look at this reference photo, you, um, pop over there. It is a brought reference photo. So if you do want to end up either following along with the tutorial that's going to be released um, or if you want to sort of see um, how you would tackle this image and have a go yourself, then it is a reference photo that you will have to purchase off that website. Um, but I thought this one would be a good one to sort of discuss how I sort of go about my process when I'm, I'm thinking about my reference photos and how I'm going to tackle the image that's in front of me. So once I decided that this was a reference photo that I wanted to draw, I wanted to make sure that it was a suitable reference photo. Um, so has it got a pleasing composition? Now a lot of the time this can be up to, um, sort of subject to interpretation. So my version of what I think a good reference photo is going to be and a pleasing composition might be different to what you guys think. Um, now there are some rules that you can follow. I'm not going to pretend like I know what these rules really are um, because I just tend to um, sort of pick a reference photo that I like the look of. Of, and that feels pleasing to me to look at if that makes sense. Um, I know that there's a couple of people um, if you go online and have a search of sort of composition rules for artwork um, I'm sure that sort of all the different rules um, that you can apply to a, a composition will come up for you to have a look at um, but I mainly just go off whether I feel like the image is a good image um, or if I like the image and it feels like it works in the proportion of what I'm going to draw. Now, when I came across this one, I thought it was quite a powerful image. Um, so it's quite a zoomed in um, piece um, of this tiger's head. And I feel like it's with the brightness of the eyes, it's a very powerful image. Um, I needed to make sure when I chose this one that I had the right amount of detail. Now, you don't need it to be sort of a hyper realistic HD sort of um, style image. Um, as you can see on this one, there are some blurred out sections over here, but there's enough detail I feel like I can work from this image. Um, it's not blurred out, let's say, for example, like this part down here where um, sort of if you look through the whiskers, I'm not going to be able to really pick out any details from there. Um, so I needed to make sure that this main section that I was going to do um, was a good amount of detail. So I can see all the individual fur, um, I can notice the different tonal changes, um, the direction of the fur, which I feel like is one of the most important things. Um, when choosing a good reference photo. Now, where I like to start first, once I've decided that I've got a good reference photo, or I've got a reference photo that I'm happy to draw um, and I feel like will make a good image, I first off start by making sure, sort of picking out where the brightest bright highlights are gonna be. Now I'm gonna draw directly onto my iPad for you guys just to make it a little bit easier so you can see. So when I had a look at this one, I noticed that the very the brightest area that I could find was, 
just block out the whole image for you there, was around this eye. So especially in the iris, and but also this big area of bright white fur that's coming out from underneath his eye. That's gonna be one of the brightest areas that I can find on this piece. There are some other areas, such as round the muzzle, so just at the bottom down here, and also obviously his other eye um, and some of this fur down here. But I think when I sort of zoned into it, these sort of the eyes and the muzzle were the two brightest areas that I could find. Now normally when you're having a look at reference photos, you tend to find that the highlight in the eye is one of the brightest areas. Um, but for this guy, this um, the lower area of the iris is sort of just as bright as that highlight. And I do the same with the darks to be honest. I have a look and find out which is where's the darkest black on the board. And um, because I can't go darker than what the board actually is. So the areas that are gonna be the darkest and the blackest, they're the areas that I'm just gonna wanna leave. Um, sort of the, either the color of the board or add a small amount of detail just to give a little bit of texture. So those areas are gonna be sort of just here in the nose and all these stripes. So there's quite a lot to choose from, but all these different stripes, they're all the ones that are gonna be the darkest areas. So once I've done that, I have a look at the different textures that are gonna be on this piece. Now I'll come to fur texture in a minute, but sort of at this point, I'm talking about different textures. So the textures, let's say in the eye, just underneath the eye and also on this guy's nose, they're gonna be the textures in this one to look at. And you're almost looking to see, really are any of these areas of texture gonna prove difficult or do I need to have a good think about how I'm gonna tackle these areas? So if I have a look at this eye, normally when I pick a reference photo, I make sure that the eye has quite a lot of detail um, because I like to get this area nice and bright so that, no, sorry, um, nice and detailed so that it draws the viewer's eye into it. Now the air, one of the things that I found with this one is that there's not an awful lot of detail in this eye. There's this big area of stark white contrast um, but there's not an awful lot of detail in it. There's some very, very slight tonal changes, sort of if you look at this top area and also just around um, where it fades off, there's a little bit of, like I say, tonal change, but there's no specific detail. So we already know that these eyes, and it's the same on the other eye, there's maybe a little bit more detail with some of the tonal changes up this area and over here. But I know instantly that this area, these eyes are gonna prove a little bit challenging for me. So what I'm gonna to have to do is have a look at some other reference photos um, and make sure, maybe try and influence the eyes on this piece with some of my other reference photos and just to add a little bit more detail into these eyes just so it's not as boring to look at, if that makes sense. So another area that I may find a little bit challenging is the nose, so a few people find this area quite difficult. So again, you just have a look at this area and think, well, how am I gonna tackle this area? Am I gonna use um, hatching, cross hatching, stippling? Um, so I like, as you probably know from seeing some of my other videos, I like to use stippling quite a lot when I'm looking at areas such as this. Just because, to be honest, it's a personal preference. I feel like I can get a little bit more detail, a little bit more control, when, especially when I'm trying to leave, let's say, the blemishing marks like sort of around here um, and even some of these little blemishes down here so all these areas I feel like I can have a sort of a, a better level of control if I use stippling over hatching or cross hatching now there's some people out there that would hatch and cross hatch this and it work absolutely fine it looked really good however I'm not very good at hatching and cross hatching so I find I like to stipple um, any sort of texture that skin um, or let's say in the corner of this guy's eyes, I'll probably stipple all this area down here. So as well as planning for those areas of texture um, that aren't fur that you're gonna have to plan for, you also need to have a look at the different fur textures within the whole piece um, and work out sort of, is there anything extra that you're gonna need to do for those areas? So the nice easy areas on this one are gonna be these short areas of fur um, that are, to be honest, over the majority of this piece. So it comes all up here. All this is sort of that um, short to medium length fur, which is gonna be absolutely fine. It's not gonna to pose too much of a problem. 
However, the area that I notice that's going to be a little bit more difficult is these areas down here. So these long sort of sideburn type areas. Now they may not look too difficult to begin with, but the problem is when it when you're looking at it on let's say your computer screen or you print it out on an A4 bit of paper, this area is literally only this size. However, once you blow that image up um, to fit on your board, so the board that I've done this one on is 14 by 18 inches, that small area that's about that size ends up being about this long. So trying to create fur texture that's sort of that sort of long in stroke is very difficult to do and make it look effective or realistic. You can't sort of go in with these short strokes and build it up to make it look like long fur. You do have to put some quite long strokes in to give that texture. So those areas and on this side are gonna be a little bit more challenging when it comes to the fur texture. And as well as looking at the fur texture um, and areas that you may find challenging with that, you also need to look at the fur direction. So like I say, most areas, let's take this area for example over here, it's nice, it's easy, it's all going in the same way. So it's all coming over this way. Some slight sort of directional changes that you can sort of follow quite easily. Not sort of being too, too difficult. However, when you come over it, let's say onto the bridge of the nose, for example, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, a little bit more complex. So that first starts by going up here. So I'm just drawing on here for you guys, just so you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking it up that well. So over as it comes to the bridge of the nose, it starts to change direction. Come down here. So this is what I mean by when having a look at your reference photo and make sure you're planning out sort of the fur direction and which way you're going to be going with it. Because if you end up sort of just going, let's say just straight down with all this fur, you're going to lose all of the form that brings the center of this nose forward towards the viewer and these sides receding outwards. You're gonna lose all that just by going straight down. So you need to make sure that you are curving the fur and following sort of the direction that it's gonna be laying on. And that's what takes the most time, especially this area here. I know this area is gonna take me quite a while to do because I'm gonna be so meticulous trying to get sort of the fur going in the right direction because I hate it when let's say I come to this area here and I've gone a little bit um, either too straight this way or too straight that way and it's not going in quite the right direction I feel like my eyes always drawn to that area there I'll just delete that off so you can have a look at the reference photo again so as well as the third direction um, after we've looked at that I also look at I know I've talked about contrast a little bit at the beginning um, but what you also like to do is look at the very, very subtle areas of change in tone. So obviously you've got the, the sort of main difference between the bright whiteness of the eye and the stark blackness of this fur. But what I'm talking about is the very, very slight subtle change, let's say there for example, or over here, where this area in the middle is obviously brighter than these two areas over here. And let's say this area down here. So this area is obviously darker than this one. So it's making sure that you've planned these areas out and you know where you need to put either more layers down or stronger fur strokes down to make these areas brighter compared to these areas over here that are going to be a lot darker. And it's not just the fur. If you have a look in the eyes, I'll draw a line so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So the area in this bit here, that's going to be very quite, very sort of bright white. However, over here and up here, it's going to fade out to a lighter shade of gray and then even off to a black over here. So it's these little areas that are gonna give sort of a, a more depth of realism to your work and how you can't quite see, but you've got some very, very light fur just in here and it fades out and it gets slowly gets brighter as it comes out into the center where the light's catching it a little bit more. And even on the nose, so you can see down at the bottom of the nose, where it fades out into the black down at the bottom compared to this stark line that you've got down here where you've obviously got this really really um, sort of bright sunlit area compared to what you've got down here now if you can fade out 
this area down here it makes the bottom of the nose look like it's receding back so planning those little areas in on all the different areas of the fur and all the different areas of the skin will hopefully give your work sort of a lot more realism so i hope you found this helpful um, obviously you can apply these textures these um, techniques to really any reference photo this is just the one that we've been working on today um, so I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again in the next video.